Oh, no. What you're not going to do is come for Red Lobster. Uh, 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 uh. If I got $15 left, they will be spent at Red Lobster just to help them survive into the future. I already lost Chesapeake Bay Seafood House. Don't you take my Red Lobster. Thank you guys for tuning in. I am Reese Woods, and as you probably know, at Open Mic, we like to start things off with a few stories or a take on a story you're not likely to get anywhere else. You also know that I'm from gorgeous Prince George's, and now I live in D.C., so these jokes are fried hard with love and then dipped in mumbo sauce. Then probably dropped on the floor, but we're going to forget about that because it's a five-second rule in effect. Let's start things off in D.C., where our Washington Commanders kicked off a new football season yesterday with a new look a new quarterback and the same old stadium. While Carson Wentz was on the field doing what he does best, the stadium itself was doing what it does best, raining blessings down on fans. Or as Michael Phillips from the Richmond Times put it, there you go. Ceremonial first leaky pipe is the year here in Washington. Oh, man. And first, by the way, is the key word here. First is doing all of the heavy lifting. I'm not trying to jinx anything. But I got a feeling eh, there might be more because FedEx Field is nothing if not consistent with the leaks that they've had out there. You would think they would have uh, have something other than trash cans and caution tape to handle future ones. You might want to go ahead and lay out a supply of bounty paper towels. It is the quicker picker upper. Why not just add that with your ticket? You know, you get your ticket, you get a program, you get a couple bounty paper towels. How about they just give everybody a construction belt so they can help try and fix that during the couple of hours that they're sitting in the stadium? Or how about they just spend the money and fix the pipes? They can do that. That's an option. The team won the game, by the way. However, the janitors lost again. For this next story, we go across the pond where officials have asked mourners of the late Queen Elizabeth to stop leaving tributes to her in London's Royal Parks. Now they've been leaving the usual letters, flowers, stuffed animals, and marmalade sandwiches. This was thanks to a conversation she had with Paddington Bear in a sketch they both appeared in. Perhaps you would like a marmalade sandwich. I always keep one for emergencies. So do I. I keep mine in here. Oh. For later. Uh, can you can you be both Team Paddington and Team Winnie the Pooh, or do you have to choose? Is it like Bloods and Crips? You can can you can you do both? Can I, Aaliyah? Can I have both flags? All right, I can have both flags. By the way, that's when Paddington knew that he was dealing with a real one. You know, she had hot sauce in that bag too. Everybody living in D.C. knows why these officials are upset. You can't just leave food lying around city parks only if you want your grief to become some rat's blessing uh, or joy and besides it's not like she and paddington are going to eat the sandwiches that was just for the sketch because he's a bear they eat fish she was the queen of england they ate colonized diamonds and speaking of bears and eating a black bear in connecticut invited himself to a two-year-old's birthday party last weekend look at that look at that guy right there Unfortunately, they didn't have any fish or marmalade or colonized diamonds, but they did have cupcakes to which Yogi helped himself after the adults rushed the kids into the house. Now, let's be honest. I mean, I know I'm a mark for bears. I know bears is, is, is just right at number two on my all-time favorite animals list. Y'all gotta admit, he's cute, right? He's gotta be cute. He got his juice box ready and everything. Man, we love bears. We love them when they break into houses. We love them when they get in the hot tubs. We love them when they crash kids' birthday parties. Just as long as you keep the kids away or, you know, it would be a very, very different kind of party. Uh, probably, probably wouldn't make our show in that case. And finally, Fairfax County in Virginia seems to have a bit of a density problem with its deer population. There are so many, <coughs> excuse me, there are so many, the county is allowing qualified people to hunt them. But you've got to unleash your inner Katniss Everdeen in order to do it. So you can go get your hunt on, but you have to use a bow and arrow. According to them, the medieval way is the safest way compatible with parks and residential areas. Now, in the 62 years they've been having the hunts, they've only had five accidents with the last one in 1996. And if that isn't a PSA for common sense gun control, then I don't know what is. I'm just saying, we've heard about hunters accidentally getting shot, but I've never heard about one catching an arrow in the chest. If it's good enough for the deer, 
I think it's good enough for us. And by the way, if you're thinking that you might want to volunteer for the hunt just so you can get access to a sweet bow and arrow, just know you're not the first. <laughs>